Well, it was another busy week in Ottawa with the opposition leader pushing the prime minister to follow through on a lawsuit threat and ousted liberal Jane Philpott accusing Trudeau of breaking the law. Let's get a look at what Canadians think of the members in Ottawa with pollster Nick Nanos and the host of PowerPlay, Don Martin. Ah, oh, thank you, Toronto. It's time for another number-filled Nanos on the numbers featuring the one and the only Nick Nanos. Hey, Don. How are you, Nick? Good. Uh, the Liberals should avert their eyes, I guess, for this uh, first poll graphic of the week. Uh, SNC, Lavalin, the looks question, like it's taking a bite. <laughs> the question is, Don, how long can they avert their eyes? <laughs> uh, you know, the latest Nanos tracking has the Conservatives up ahead, 35%. Liberals a few points back at 33, NDP at 17. You can see Liberals down seven points from the last federal election. NDP are down, Conservatives are up, Green are up, Blocks a little bit up too. Oh, so, really? uh, okay. so, you know, still you look at that trajectory for the Liberals, not great. Uh, but the good news is they are still kind of in the race because factoring the margin of error, it's still uh, a tight run between the Conservatives and the Liberals. Is there a number, generally regarded number, on these things where you say, okay, you've got a minority government at least? Like, is that 30, 40% is kind of a majority territory. Yeah. Where's minority territory? I think once you uh, get anything below 36%, yeah. you're probably in a minority okay. territory. So right now, we're looking at, uh, if these numbers held up, a Conservative minority government mm. led by Andrew Scheer. Okay. Today. Today. But that's not the election, but... Well, I, we'll, we'll, get, we'll probably have lots of time in September, October to talk about that, Nick. But let's move along because apparently there was a budget last month. Budget? Was there? You're tracking public know. opinion on this budget. <laughs> I don't seem to remember much about that. It was swallowed up like a giant black hole with the uh, SNC. Yeah. yeah, and the survey that we did with the Globe and Mail right after the budget, you can see that there's really uh, no big bounce, no bounce at all. You know, even factoring, you know, think the Liberals are at 33%. Nationally, there aren't even 33% of Canadians, 31% actually have a positive or somewhat positive view of, uh, of the federal budget. So uh, no big bounce uh, for the Liberals out of this. Budgets are usually infomercials yeah. for whoever the government is of the day. <laughs> Especially in an election year. Budget. Not so much. There is just, Don, is there such a thing as too much news? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, too much controversy crowded out everything related to the budget. It was... For all intents and purposes, not a big win. I would Neutral. Love, I'd love to have you ask them, name one thing in the budget and see if anyone could, because actually they can't. Yes. I have vague memories of housing. That's about it. All right. Moving along, uh, there is a connection on the budget front about uh, deficits. Exactly. And this is probably going to be one of the key dividing lines come the next federal election. You know, the, the Liberals are comfortable in running, if we want to be kind, strategic deficits in order to invest. Conservatives are more likely to tilt towards a balanced budget. You know, when we asked Canadians in the survey for the Global Mail how they felt about balancing the budget to ease the tax burden versus running a deficit to invest, you can see people by about a 12-point margin are more likely to tip in favor of not having a deficit and uh, and balancing the budget. So uh, hmm. so this is this should be a little bit of a note, a cautionary note, uh, especially for the Liberals. That uh, I think the polling suggests that periodically running a deficit, sure, making part of your regular operating procedure, perhaps it's a little more of a political risk. Uh, of course, the next question always is, what would you do to balance that budget? What would you give up? And if you give the wrong answer, then suddenly the opinion swings, right? Yeah, but, you know, the thing is, is that for the Conservatives under Stephen Harper, uh, although they didn't balance the budget all mm -hmm. the time because they had the, the Great Recession to deal with, mm -hmm. it was at least an objective. And that's, that's what this is about. Mm -hmm. What should the objective be in the government? And it looks like right now, for Canadians, they're more likely to tilt towards uh, balancing the books than uh, running a deficit. Okay, this next graphic I find kind of interesting because I don't normally see this and we have our chats here. What does this tell you about how the U.S. is looking at us? This is a survey or study that we did for the American Chamber of Commerce in Canada. It's of top CEOs, American CEOs uh, in the country. And what it shows is that the appetite for American firms to invest in Canada has noticeably dropped from 2017 <laughs> to uh, the tail end of last year. It speaks to the tentativeness as a result of the USMCA. And uh, although these executives are still fairly positive related to the future, future of the Canadian economy, investment right now is on hold. And this is why steel tariffs, the ratification of the USMCA, our relationship with Donald Trump are all big factors right now when it comes to investment in Canada. So not a big bump for the, for the, on the budget front, the Liberals are kind of sliding, 
and the investment environment, at least from a U.S. executive perspective, not very hot right now. That's setting up some gloomy news for the can for the liberals come the fall because it's always about the economy, right? Well, think of it this way, Don. If we hit a mild recession, that'll be another whammy on the liberal wow. party trail, so All to right. speak. All right, Nick. Thank you. Always interesting. And we'll head it back to you in Toronto.